Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the training mode on the Casio G-Shock GBX100 watch. And we're gonna be doing a basic overview of the training mode, kind of for the person who's sitting out there thinking about buying this watch, just wanna get an idea of how does it work. There are some other things that are more specific, like things like an auto pause, um, activity alerts that you can set up during this, uh, but I'm not gonna be showing that. We're just gonna be doing the basics. I wanna start an activity, I wanna stop an activity, uh, that kind of stuff. From any of the modes, right now I'm in my timekeeping mode, the top right button is going to be what gets you into your training mode. So if I press the top right button, it basically lets the watch know that I'm ready to go do an activity. This watch is not like the Garmin watches. You can't say I'm gonna go do a hike or a walk or cycling or pickleball or something like that. It's basically just a single training mode, kind of similar to a Timex Ironman. This is my view. If you want to change your view, you can press the display button. It's the top left button. You have three different displays you can choose from. There's this one that's going to be more focused on your lap time. This one that's going to be more focused on your speed. And then the other one that's going to be more focused on your split time. This watch does have a GPS functionality, but it basically connects to your cell phone and uses your cell phone GPS. That is something you can turn off if you don't want it connecting to your cell phone at all. Whenever we're ready to start our run or our activity, we're gonna press the start button. It's the top right button while we're in the training mode. My activity has now begun. You're basically out walking, running. The one thing you can't do on this watch is you can't go to a different mode. So if I'm out doing a walk and I wanna look and see when sunrise and sunset is, I can't do that. I would be able to press this bottom right button but when I'm in the training mode, the bottom right button is going to record a lap versus take me to my sunrise and sunset information. Um, during the training, at any point, you can press the top right button and it'll basically pause the activity. You're gonna get this screen that comes up. I can choose to resume it. Maybe I'm out walking, I stop and talk to a neighbor. I would press that when I'm ready to start going again. I can press resume. If I'm done with the activity, I could use the down button and save it. Or if I just want to totally start over or discard it, I could go all the way down to delete and delete the activity. I'm going to go ahead and do resume. At any point, if you want to record a lap, you would use the lap button. It's the bottom right button. And now we've got our lap time. So lap one was 41 seconds. Our split time is going to be the overall time for our activity. Again, during the activity, I can press the display button and I can look at different screens just pertaining to the activity. Again, I can press lap time as many times as I want to to record a lap. You don't have to keep it on that screen. That screen will stay up there for 10 seconds. At any point, you could have pressed either of their two buttons on the uh, left hand side of the watch to bypass that. You'll notice there's things like my speed that is not increasing because I'm not out actually moving. So the only thing you're really getting to see here is split time, but things like your calories, your speed, all of that would be adjusting if we were out actually moving. Once we're totally done, we're going to press the top right button. Again, that's going to pause our activity and then we can go down to choose to save it or delete it. I think the watch allows you to save 100 activities on the watch. And then again, they sync over to the G-Shock Move app as well. So you can go view your um, activity information on the G-Shock Move app. Maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, go out and do an activity and try and show you what it looks like on the G-Shock Move app. You're basically going to end the activity, save it. When your watch syncs to your cell phone, your uh, activity information will be moved over. We're going to go ahead and go into the G-Shock Move app. And at a glance, you can see your most recent activity. I could hit the X and close it if I want to. I could see activity details by clicking on the activity details, or I could go to the bottom menu bar and I could simply click on the activity link and that will take me to all of my activity history. You can see here's a listing of my most recent activities. You can click on any one of these and you can see information about the given activity. The map information is up at the top, you can change your view. You can zoom in. You 
You cannot play the activity. So unlike Garmin or Cento watches, you can't see the actual activity moving as your pace is moving. So I'm not real sure why they didn't do that. To me, that's something that uh, any activity tracker should have. I can see a start and end point, just these two dots, but that's it. At the bottom, you can see some of the details of your activity. My distance, my time, average pace, max pace, energy consumption, so on and so forth. You've got a few different analytic options. You can make a note about the activity, so on and so forth. Anyway, I hope that gives you a quick idea of what the activity looks like on your app when you use the activity mode on your GBX100 watch.